Okay. Uh, first of all, she's the loose woman legend who's spent the past 25 years giving us as much needed laugh at lunchtime. It's Loose Women, live with Kay Adams. Radio host Alan Brazil detailed his own early start, including the fact that his wife Jill gets up with him at 3.45 every morning. 3.45? <laughs> Why Pour some crunchy nut cornflakes in a bowl. No, Why? Right? Realism, pragmatism, <laughs> that's the old <order> thing. <laughs> Oh my God, I've killed the babysitter. She'd never been on a zip wire before, you see. She saw this big tree coming to her, <laughs> and so she went, <laughs> She broke nine ribs. Happy 60th birthday, Kay Adams! Yeah. Are you happy now? <laughs> Uh, now, after she marked her 60th birthday last year, Kay Adams has released a new podcast where she says that uh, you can stay fabulous at any age. She joins us Welcome. now, and it's Welcome. lovely to Thank see you. Thank you. And it's funny, the end of that, uh, when we watched that, that happy birthday, happy 60th birthday, that was not a happy moment, because <laughs> the, the, you are one of those people who you've lied about your age to your own children. I have. I'm here to confess, everyone, here to confess. But I'm, I'm, I'm out now, I'm, I'm very sort of clean about it. Yeah, I've al I always got kind of really, um, you know, troubled about my age. My mum was the same and I used to laugh at my mum because, you know, she would never say what age she was to anyone. And if we threatened as children to do it, she'd be, shut up! And she would always say, I'm over 21. And we laughed at her at the time. But then you obviously sort of take on board these messages. Yeah. And, and I did. And I shaved a good, well, between eight and 12 years off my age whenever Charlie, I Charlie, your daughter, wasn't it? With the, Charlie, my daughter. Then you, then you yes. came clean. And then I thought, this is ridiculous. I sort of got a grip of myself. And I took her for a coffee. And I thought she would be howling with laughter and think, oh, mum, you are a card. And her little face just dropped. Oh, really? And I thought, oh, God, this is just, that. you know, this has gone way beyond. What was a joke to me, actually, was just stupid. And, you know, I kind of thought, right, this is daft. Well, the, the podcast, um, How To Be 60, what's nice about it is you get to see it from both sides because it's yourself and it's Karen McKenzie and you both are very open and very honest about this, you being on the side of actually not really enjoying it too much. But same side as Philip. Same side <laughs> as Phil, yeah. yeah. And and then you've got Karen, who very much is, you know, embraces it and loves it, and that ageing is a privilege. Yeah, and, and I've learned a lot from her, I have to say, you know, because um, she is choosing what she wants to do with her life. And it's funny, because my kids now are 20 and 16. Mm. And, you know, at that age, you speak to them a lot, don't you, about what do you want to do with your life, what brings you satisfaction, mm. what makes you happy? And then you kind of get on the hamster wheel and you just keep going yeah. and you get into work and you get into kids, some people or other dependents. And then there comes a point that I think, and it doesn't have to be 60, it can be a bit before, a bit after, whatever, that you think, what do I really want to do with my life? Totally. Life isn't forever, and mm. I don't mean to be morbid, but mm. you have that realisation and you think, am I doing what is making me happy mm. or am I just doing what I've always done? And Karen has helped me come to that realisation. And like my mum and dad worked until the late 70s. Um, you know, they, they wanted to mm -hmm. until unfortunately they succumbed to illness. Um, and I don't think I want to do that. You know, I, no. do, I think I do want to take the opportunity to do other things. What do you, what do you want to do? I just want to have a bit more breathing room. Yeah. I don't want to be on that hamster wheel all the time. I still want to work, but I want to have a bit more choice. I want to learn Spanish. I really want to learn Spanish. Mm. It's always been a big kind of thing with me, the places I want to travel to. Um, you know, I, I just want to sort of admire the view a little bit more. Rather than climbing up the hill, mm. which I've done all my life, I want to sort of stop and admire the view and think, do you know what? I fancy that. Carol Vorderman is a great example, well, she's I think, just of a this. Legend. She's yeah, an inspiration. Absolutely, absolutely. And she loves the outdoor world now and she's doing her gym stuff. Yeah. And I think, yeah, she's a great It's model. almost that thing where you go, right, when you're getting older, you feel like your world gets smaller. And it's like, no, who said that that was a thing? It's like everything, why not have it all open up? You know yourself better than you yeah. ever have done. You know, when you're younger, that's yeah. probably the hardest bit. And you've got that with age now. Absolutely. Like, enjoy, enjoy it. And you have. Challenge yourself. You know, you have done those things. You have know what's said... coming. <laughs> <laughs> well, you said yes to Strictly, and I remember like messaging you, going, "You are 
awesome because I just thought, good for you. Like, you put yourself out there. I thought it was really brave. Yeah, yeah, brave. I say brave slash stupid, and, and I'm only saying that against myself because Strictly is a wonderful production. I met so many wonderful people. Obviously, I was partnered with Kai, and honestly, he's the son I never had. I mean, so it was a brilliant experience on so yeah. many levels. But I had that thing in my head, put yourself out of your comfort zone. Mm. Yeah. And it was a long way out of my comfort zone. Yeah. It, it really, really was. And I don't think I fully appreciated that until I was standing there, draped across a bar in a flamenco outfit, thinking, what the heck am I doing? <laughs> it, I, I found it. it very emotionally challenging. I really yeah. did. Yeah. yeah. And, did. and looking back on it, I mean, are you glad you did it? Uh, yes, yes, be, because I met so many wonderful people and, and because I've got that experience. Yeah. But I will say it gave me great highs and it also gave me mm. a lot of self-reflection. It, yeah. it was tough and I know people are going to say, oh, my God, how can you say that? You had the most wonderful opportunity. Mm. And I did and I appreciate it. But for me personally, mm. it stretched me, okay. you know? You um, have something very exciting, all you girls do, actually, because Loose Women are going on tour. We They're are. coming to a town near you. <laughs> what Beware. Love, I mean, what a love, I mean, you have a live audience anyway, and we know how yeah. much you missed those when oh, we were during hugely, the pandemic. Hugely. But this really is going out there and seeing all the people who watch yep. your show and kind of, they can be part of it. We're all over, we're Cardiff, we're Sheffield, we're my hometown of Glasgow, the London Palladium, all wow. across the oh, country amazing. in September. Um, I think it's 16 or 18 dates. The thing I'm most excited about, I have to say, is a, I think we're getting a tour bus. I really want a tour bus. You're going on the road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the thought of four loose women, you know, oh sleeping God, overnight in a bar. bar? <laughs> oh, my God. Well, they will have to it have a bar. better do at least a mini fridge. Um, but, um, yeah, we, I mean, loose women really thrives on its audience. I mean, it's a show that is about you know, sharing the same experiences mm. that our audiences are having. Mm. And to be able to do that in a live setup and really sort of get up close with people, um, honestly, we can't wait. Well, I'm you really start, uh, start that in ball. Birmingham on the 1st of, um, of September. Uh, How To Be 60 is out now. And the lovely thing about you, um, you guys, and you're only next door in here, I mean, you are so honest and open with each other. That's the lovely thing about the podcast too. There's yeah. something about podcasts that may, yeah. I think people open up more on a podcast. Yeah, I mean, well, Shane Ritchie actually is is uh, is on this week, and and Shane was wonderful. Mm -hmm. You know, it really, he's not that keen on being sixty. He's not sixty yet. I'll have to give him that, Shane. Um, but you know, he talked about his relationship with his father, but how he'd come to to peace with that, how he separated the person from the performer, mm. and how he's really sort of investing in his kids as a parent. So he he was wonderfully honest. It's it's a really good lesson. Um, Kate, it's lovely to see you. Thank, Thank you. you for coming in. Thank, Thank you. you. Right, in just.